Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have 2 to the power x plus 8 to the power x equals 130. And we're going to be solving for x values, real and complex. So let's get started. First of all, I want you to notice that 2 to the power x and 8 to the power x are both increasing functions because when you have an exponential function f of x equals b to the power x and when b is greater than 1 then you do have an increasing function obviously you don't want the base to be negative or 0 uh, you know that's going to have some issues but if b is between 0 and 1 then you'll have a decreasing function let me give you an example for both for example if you have y equals 1 half to the power x, this is going to be decreasing, and y equals 3 to the power x is going to be increasing. So one of the graphs is going to look like this, and the other graph is going to look like this, pretty much. Okay, so now we do have two increasing functions, and their sum is equal to a constant, which means you're going to have a single solution, right? Because you have a function that is increasing, and you have a horizontal line, they're going to intersect at a single point. But obviously it's going to be above, so I kind of did a little bit something to the graph to show you, um, you know, just uh, what the intersection point is going to look like. So let's go ahead and set 2 to the power x equal to y. And let me rewrite the equation. We have 2 to the x plus 8 to the x equals 130. You probably guessed at this point what the x value is going to be or the y value because of our substitution. Uh, but let's proceed. So if you replace 2 to the power x with y, this is y, and this is 2 to the power x cubed because 8 to the power x can basically be written as 2 to the power 3 to the power x, which is 2 to the power 3x, which is 2 to the power x to the power 3. So you can basically cube uh, the base and the exponent is jo just going to be the same. So from here we get the following. Since we called 2 to the power x y, we get y plus y cubed equals 130. Normally I would be presenting two methods for this problem and obviously one of the methods would be if I was introducing two methods, I'm just going to tell you what it is. The first method would probably be the cubic formula. As you know, we can just, and by the way, we don't have y squared, so the, applying the cubic formula is going to be pretty easy, except for the fact that there's going to be some fractions we have to deal with. So, uh, when you're using the cubic formula, just think about this, a plus b quantity cubed minus 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. And from here, if you use this very many times, you're just going to memorize it real easily. And uh, basically, we're going to call this y, and then the coefficient of y is going to be negative 3ab, it's 1 here, so we're going to set that equal to 1, negative 3ab equals 1, I just can't write it 3 fast, okay, negative 3ab equals 1, and the constant term is just going to be 130, which is a cubed plus b cubed. So you can go ahead and solve this as a system. This is going to give you a quadratic system and then find the values of a and b and put it together with the cube roots and all that stuff. That's going to give you the y value. And then you can go use it to find the x value. But that's pretty painful. Let's go ahead and proceed because I'm also going to show you something else. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We could definitely reuse the rational root theorem or guess and check, but let's do something smarter than that. So here's what, what I'm going to do. I'm going to write the y cubed plus y as y times y squared plus 1. And then also write the 130 as 2 times 65. Well, this is not very good, so let's just write it as, let me think about it. How about 5 times 26? Okay, that's better. And then write the 5 times 26 as 5 times 5 squared plus 1, and then set it equal to this one. Make sense? So let's get rid of this work because we've done the work already. Now notice that we have a one-to-one -one correspondence and which is really nice, right? If y equals five, then this is gonna work. It just gives us one of the solutions, but that's good. Y equals five works. Great, how do you find the other solutions? By considering the following, if you go ahead and write this as y cubed plus y equals 125 plus five, 
and then bring those over here y cubed minus 125 plus y minus 5 equals 0. And then you can factor this by grouping y minus 5. That is going to be a difference of two cubes. Remember the formula y squared plus 5y plus 25. And then the second piece is just 1 times that. And now we have a common factor, which is y minus 5, which also indicates that y equals 5 is a solution. We already talked about it. And the other factor is going to be y squared plus 5y plus 25 plus 1, which means plus 26. Here we go. So, uh, sorry, if, if that was too fast. y equals 5 is a solution. And from here we get complex solutions. Isn't that exciting? That's going to be very interesting. So by using the quadratic formula, y is going to be negative 5 plus minus the square root of 79i. Come on, you can do this. Easy piece of cake, right? So those are going to be the y values. First one is easy. Let's go ahead and take care of that first. So y equals 5 means what? We said that 2 to the power x, right, equals y. Here we go. So let's go ahead and back substitute. 2 to the power x equals 5. If you ln both sides, ln 2 to the x equals ln 5. Move the x, x ln 2 equals ln 5. Then from here, x is going to be ln 5 over ln 2. Easy, right? This is the real deal. But what about the other ones? Let's go ahead and do the same thing. Exact same thing, right? Well, pretty much. y equals 2 to the x. And if that's equal to, let's just take one of these. I'll show you how to do one of them. And then the other one is just going to be very, very similar. Okay, we're going to ln both sides again, ln 2 to the x equals ln this. And I'm using the positive sign, but uh, you can do the exact same thing with the positive, negative sign. And then move the x, x ln 2. Now here's the million dollar question. What is the ln of a complex number? Hmm. Let's think about it, right? Okay, so let me tell you. Let's leave it as ln of a complex number first. So obviously we're going to have to divide both sides by ln 2. And that's going to give us the x value, right? To keep a long story short. So that's the x value, but let's go ahead and simplify the numerator. So how do you ln a complex number? So here's how, what you can do. Obviously, this complex number can be written like this in standard form. And then this can be turned into the polar form, which is r times e to the power i theta, where r is the modulus or the absolute value. And you can easily evaluate that. r is going to be the square root of 25 over 4 plus 79 over 4. And there's some of the some of these two numbers are going to be 1 of 4. If you divide it by 4, you're going to get 26. So this is going to be square root of 26. Easy. How about the theta? The theta is the argument, the angle. And theta can be described as tan inverse of the angle, this divided by that. That's going to be negative root 79 over 5. But you also have to consider the fact that cosine is going to be negative and sine is going to be positive. What does that mean? It just means that you're going to be in the second quadrant, right? So your angle needs to reflect that. If it doesn't, then you can kind of adjust it. Okay, so under these conditions, we can go ahead and write our number, uh, ln, of, um, since our number was given as, let me go ahead and repeat that real quick. Uh, this is how we wrote our number. We're going to ln both sides here. Make sense? ln negative 5 over 2 plus root 79 over 2. i is the same as ln r i theta. r times e to the power i theta. When you ln this, you're going to get that. But when you ln them, you can go ahead and separate these first. And then ln r, r is just going to be, we already know that, it's square root of 26. And then this is just going to be i theta, right? But theta is the tan inverse of something, right? So we can also replace it with that, and we get the ln of our number right away. But we have to divide by ln 2, so let's go ahead and find the answer. We're going to take this number. divided by ln 2, and that's going to be the other x value. Obviously, you can also add multiples of 2 pi, so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. Now, what did I do to the graph? I graphed this, but I also scaled it, so I kind of shrunk our graph vertically, so you can see it, otherwise it's going gonna, it's gonna to be way too steep. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.